In this tutorial, I will show you how to array an object around another object in Blender. And I'll also show you why this feature might be useful for different things that you're creating. So I'm going to click right down here on the modifier properties, and I can click on add modifier. And under generate, I'm going to click on the array modifier. So the array modifier is going to take the geometry, and it's basically going to duplicate it and move it over. And so we have a count here, so I can click on this to turn the count up. And we also have a relative offset. And so what this will do is it'll array the object over just by the object size because it is set to 1. And right now, since it's on factor x, it is going to array it over on the x-axis. And I can drag this factor x if I want there to be more space in between each arrayed object. And then I could also array on the y-axis as well, or the z-axis as well. Now to array this object from a different object, I can press Shift A, and I'm just going to add a plane axis. And I'm just using the plane axis because these objects don't show up in the render, but you could really use any object. So I'm now going to click back on the cube, and I'm going to turn on the object offset. And I can click on the arrow to open it up. And then right here on the object, I can choose the empty, or I can click on the eyedropper and click on the empty. So this way, instead of it being arrayed over by the object, it's being arrayed over by the other object. And so if I move the empty around, it's going to move around the arrayed objects. And then if I select the cube again, I'm going to just turn the factor X to 1, which is the default. So if I now move the empty farther and farther away from the center, the objects are going to be arrayed by that amount. So if I press the N key to open up the side panel, I can go here to item and you can see that this object has location, rotation, and scale values. And if I want to move the empty back to its default position, which is in the center, I can press Alt G and that will clear the location. But now as I move the empty farther and farther away, you can see the location values are moving. So for instance, if I just move this out on the X axis, you can see just the X axis is moving. So I could maybe just turn this to like a three and now now each object is going to have a space of 3 in between them because this object has been moved over by 3. And this will also work for rotation and scale as well. So I'm going to hit S to scale, and then I'm going to type in 0.9 and then enter. So because I've scaled this by 0.9, you can see here on the scale values, it is at 0.9. And so each cube is going to get smaller and smaller. And if I click on the cubes, I could turn up the count just so that you can see more of them. And so again, because this empty has been scaled by 0.9, it is smaller than its default scale. And so each cube is going to be scaled down by 0.1. And this will work for rotation as well. So if I hit R to rotate, I can rotate this over. And for instance, let's just say I want to rotate this over by 5 degrees. And then I could also hit negative to rotate it by negative 5 degrees and hit enter. So now each cube will be rotated over by 5 degrees because this empty is rotated over. And if I click back on the cubes, I could turn up the count. I could turn up the count by a lot. And you can see it's just going to continue to get smaller and smaller. So now I could move this around. I could rotate it. And you can do some really cool cool things with this. So you could scale these, you could kind of move them around, and you can get some really cool results just by moving around the empty and rotating it and scaling it. And so maybe you're creating some like abstract art and you want to create some cool like sci-fi abstract tunnel, you could do that with this method. Or of course you could scale it up or down if you want it to be bigger or smaller. But because all of these objects are just a duplicate of the first object, I can tab to go into edit mode of this object and I could edit the object. So for instance, I could select this face here and I could move it up on the z-axis and that's going to change for all the objects. And another reason why you might want to use this feature is if you're making something like a flower. So I just modeled this very simple like stylized petal and then what I'm going to do on this object is click on add modifier, add the array modifier, but then I don't want it to be moving out. So right here on the relative offset on the factor here I could just turn that to zero and then if I go here to the object offset I could open this up, I could click on the eyedropper and I could select this empty object that I've added right here. So then what I could do is I could select the empty and I could rotate the empty and you can see that's going to rotate around. And then if I click back on the petals, I could like turn up the count here so I could make much more petals. And then I could select the empty again and I could rotate that back. And you can see the petals are going through each other. So if I want to make the petals farther away, I could just move the empty object and that's going to move where the center is. And then I could also add an object here in the center. And there we go. We have a little stylized flower. And again, what's so useful about this is that I can still edit this object and it will affect the other objects. I could like extrude out this face here, maybe scale it down, kind of move it 
it around and you can see it's going to affect all of the other pedals. So that is super useful. And then let's say you're creating something like a propeller blade and you want there to be exactly three blades and you want the spacing in between them to be exactly the same. So I just modeled this basic propeller blade and you can see that the object's origin is in the very center there of the 3D scene. And then I also added an empty object and I kept it in the very center. So then I could select the propeller, I could click on add modifier and I could add the array. And then right here on the factor X, I could turn that to zero because I don't want it to be moving over. And then let's add the object offset. I can click on the arrow here and I can click on the eyedropper and let's select this empty. So now if I select the empty and start to rotate it, just like the flower, it's going to move over. And then I want three propeller blades. So if I click back here on this object, I could turn the count up to three. So I could just kind of rotate this around and try to get it to something that looks close. But what's so great about using the empty object as the rotation is that I could just rotate this to an exact amount. So with the empty selected, I will press Alt R and Alt R is going to clear the rotation. Now 360 degrees is all the way around. So if you divide 360 degrees into three different pieces, that is going to be 120 degrees. And if I hit R to rotate, I can type in 120. And right up there in the corner, you can see it says 120 and then I can hit enter. And there we go. So because I've rotated this object over by 120, 120 is the angle in between one of these. And so then each one of these is going to be exactly 120. And then of course you could like model another object here in the center for the propeller. And then also if you move both objects together, like if I hold down the shift key and select both of these objects and I rotate them, it's not going to mess up the rotation. Whereas if I just rotated the empty by itself, you can see it would mess up the rotation. And then one more example I wanted to show you, let's say you're creating a gear object and you want the gear pieces to be touching each other and connecting. To do that, I could press Shift S, go to Cursed World Origin to make sure the 3D cursor is in the center. Then I could press Shift A and like I could just add a circle here. I'll press 7 on the numpad for top view and I can press the tab key to go into edit mode. And what I'm just going to do is box select some of these vertices and I'm just going to leave the 4 at the top so I could just delete that. Then I could hold down the Shift key and select these vertices so I could press E to extrude and just bring that out and stick that there. And then I could also select these vertices here and I could extrude this down. So this is going to be one piece of the gear. So I can go back to object mode. I can click on add modifier and I could add the array. And then again, I could turn the factor to zero and then I want to press shift a and I'm just going to add a plane axis. And then back on this object, I can go to the object offset and I can click here on the eyedropper and select the empty. So then I can rotate the empty around and it's going to rotate that gear piece. So for a gear like this, let's say I want to have eight teeth. So what I could do is select the gear, go to the count and and I could turn the count up to eight and then I can select the empty object and I can rotate it and you can see it's going to rotate around. So again, I only want to rotate this object by the amount which is going to be in between one of the arrayed objects. I'll hit R to rotate and half of 90 is 45. So I can type in 45 and enter. And there we go. So we now have a gear with eight different teeth. Now if I tab into edit mode, I can just box select these vertices here and I can kind of bring them in because I want to merge that into the center. But you can see this isn't really merged we can kind of fit it together like that, but there's some overlapping faces. So what I want to do is merge the vertices which are overlapping. So on the array modifier, you can turn on the merge option and I can click on this arrow to open this up. And then there is a distance right here. So what I'm going to do is press S to scale, then I can type in zero and then enter so that all these vertices are squished together. And then to remove the overlapping vertices, I can press the M key and I can merge at center. So now this right here is just one single vertex. And then I can just bring this forward. And if I just drag it really close, I can just drag it like that close. Then I could turn up the merge distance. So I'm just going to drag this up until they are all connecting. And then you can see there's still some weird shading issues. That's just because I need to recalculate the normals. So I can select everything and press shift N to recalculate the normals. But now you can see that the center there is going to be merged together if it gets close enough. And then of course I could select everything and I could like extrude it to give the gear some thickness. So this array tool can be very helpful when you're 3D modeling. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then you can check out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships with the links in the description. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.